Doody. You are watching a short walkthrough of The Witcher 1 and has addition extra or additional adventures. And yeah. Well, this time I'm continuing my uh it's the same adventure, The Price of Neutrality. And this is the second episode. Welcome and enjoy. In the last episode, we talked uh, we talked with Sabrina, and she told us that uh, we are going to have to go to Kermor and talk to Vesemir and give them the girl that they are looking for. The girl's name is actually hold on one second, Deirdre. Yeah, and this is on the order of King Helmsund of Kedwin. Okay, Kermor, and I'm coming. Hi there, Lambert. What you doing, boy? Oh, how rude. He doesn't even salute. Alright, let's go talk to Lambert. Beowulf. Lambert. Who else is here for the winter? Vesemir and Eskel, and... well, we have guests. I know. I've been to their camp. What are you doing here? Making sure they stay out of Kaer Morhen. Our guests tried to enter Kaer Morhen? Some pompous ass showed up with an escort of dwarf mercenaries. Obviously, I couldn't let them pass. Obviously, though I hope you didn't provoke them. Didn't have a chance to. The Arcaspores sprouted first. Quite a few seem to have planted roots over the summer. I always thought they grew on the graves of the murdered. Some bad wind must have carried the spores to the valley. It's full of them now. In any case, the dwarves evacuated the noblemen as soon as the plants appeared. It's been quiet since then. Oh, look. Just another wild plant appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Lol, come on. Oh look, another one appeared. Good, good, good. Thanks for the assist, Lambert. Where can I find more wolves? Alright, this is anyway a side quest, so it's a secondary, it's not a must, but I want to do it. And actually, it was given by uh, Sabrina the Howling. I need to slay 20 wolves and bring Sabrina their labors. 
So yeah, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna cut it out of the episode because that is just boring. Look at this. This is Care Moran, the Witcher base. It's amazing how good it looks for a game that it came out in 2008. Yeah, 2007, but the enhanced edition came out in 2008. Anyway, beautiful graphics and well done, CD Projekt Red. Look at that! Just, just how nice is it, man? Beautiful. Oh, so many rats. Can't I kill them? No. Oh, they are fire resistant. Come on, guys. I need a fire resistant rat. How awesome is, how awesome is that? <laughs> Fire resistant rat, my ass. Greetings, Geralt. Good thing you're here. Greetings. How is the path? Tolerable. Nothing groundbreaking. What is going on here, Vesemir? We've got a bit of a problem. The Princess of Cainghorn arrived two days ago, claiming her envious brother and an evil sorceress were pursuing her. She's asked for our protection. She's got her castles all wrong. No knights in shining armor here. She was in bad shape. Hungry. Cold. We didn't have the heart to drive her off. Mm -hmm. And Eskel was acting strange. Before the girl fell asleep, she said one more thing. That one cannot flee one's fate. Later, Eskel told me a story. Some twenty years ago, he saved the Prince of Cainghorn's life. He cited the law of surprise, and as they say, destiny proved fortunate. Unbeknownst to the prince, his wife was with child. I'm not sure that was entirely fortunate. So you've heard of the curse. In any case, on a day when the sky was dark as night at high noon, the princess gave birth to a girl. As far as I know, Eskel never returned to claim the child promised him by the prince. For some reason, ever since then, he's always taken the long way around Cainghorn. So, now we need to deal with the brother of Eskel's unexpected child, a retinue of mercenaries, and a sorceress bent on dissecting the woman she suspects of being a mutant. As if that's not enough, the brother carries a letter of safe conduct from King Henselt himself. So we can hardly just drive them all away. What do we do? Talk to Eskel. She's his surprise. We'll meet back at the Ford Lambert is guarding. Think it through, Wolf. I want to hear your opinion. Fine. Wolf. Tell me about the girl. She seems a bit strange, though I wouldn't call her a monster. Strange how? When she's near, my medallion goes wild, and I can't cast even the simplest signs. I can't explain it. Why is everyone outside? The keep is locked. I'd rather not unlock it with strangers around. We're better off spending a few days out in the open. That way I can be sure no one will go sniffing around the fortress. True enough. Wolf. Where's Deirdre? A little further on with her wolves. I should talk to her. Oh, well, hold on, not so fast. Come back, old man. What the fuck? He got some sprint on him. Dude, what the fuck? Wolf. What do you think about this dispute, Deirdre, Sabrina, and the nobleman? We should stay out of it. Geralt, we protect humans from monsters. That's our vocation. Meddling in human affairs only brings trouble. Do you mean the letter bearing King Henselt's seal? 
Exactly. We can't afford to provoke the king. This could get sticky. I get your point. I'll see if I can learn some more. Wolf. I need to look around. My endurance disappeared. Look. That's interesting. And my medallion is going haywire. It's crazy. Look, my endurance is coming back when she's not around. Oh, for what she's leaving and I cannot believe. Greetings, Geralt. I'm Deirdre. Eskel spoke of you. I've heard a few things about you, too. If you mean from that lying shrew Glavisig. Calm down. I don't tend to judge based on rumors. Geralt? How did you find Kaer Morin? I always know where Eskel is. I merely need to think about him. What do you want from Eskel? You can be disarmingly kind. Just answer the question. I want him to stop fleeing his destiny. And become Prince of Cairngorm? Are you feeling all right, Deirdre? Eskel is a witcher. What of it? It seems you don't know how childish a witch's mores sound. I constantly hear things like, we're witches, witches have no feelings, and so on. You don't fool me. You have feelings, emotions, you're like all people, except faster. I cannot fathom why you strive so hard to hide that. It's rarely wise to fight a legend. Sometimes you have to make do with it. Perhaps. But I'm not deceived. Deirdre, do you know what Sabrina and your brother want from you? Isn't it obvious? Sabrina wants to place my sweet little brother on the throne of Cairngorm. My brother, who is entirely subservient to her, and who, as the Prince of Cairngorm, will have a vote on King Hansel's council. I was asking about something else. All right, then. She believes me to be cursed, tainted in my mother's very womb. She believes me to be a monster. Are you? How the hell should I know? When I prick my finger, I bleed. I also bleed each month. When I eat too much, my stomach aches. I sing when I am joyful. And when I feel hatred, I kill. I don't know if I'm a monster. Yet I do know what Sabrina is capable of. She is a monster you seek. Explain. I'd like to hear your side. I was 19 and happy when Sabrina showed up at the castle. My father, who always preferred Merwin, was old and ill by this time, so he could no longer bother me. My brother had been away at King Hansel's court, and I could handle most of the courtiers. I was at a tender age, and I fell in love. His name was Robin. I even considered a morganatic marriage. Girlish fantasy. What does Sabrina have to do with this? She arrived with my brother, whom she already had on a short lead. She observed me, interrogated servants, tested the situation. My father's company of knights treated me like a daughter. I had always liked hunting, took part in manhunts for bandits. She needed proof, some spectacular way to defame me. And in your carelessness, you provided her with that proof. Sabrina decided to provoke me. She seduced Robin using magic so powerful that his mind became confused. He suddenly developed an intense fear of animals, especially of the dogs he bred. I wanted to help him. It was then I discovered that mages found it hard to cast spells in my presence, and that spells previously cast gradually subsided if I was near. I went to the small chamber Robin inhabited just above the kennel, and I found Sabrina there. I admit, I was enraged, wanting to tear her apart, but she was too quick. The hag flew out of the window on a broom. Robin was left drooling, whimpering like a child. 
Within an hour, he had ceased gibbering, and within two, he understood what the witch had done to him. I thought all was in order, and I could leave him. I wished to settle the score with her and entered the castle. I know not what happened, but the spell grasped Robin once more as soon as I was gone. He began feverishly seeking Sabrina. In his wildness, he entered a pen occupied by a very aggressive hunting hound. Did he survive? Yes. Though mentally he became a two-year-old child, a child that feared animals intensely. Sabrina blamed the accident on me. I swore then that I would kill her. I carry a blade should I get the opportunity to use it. Your wolf's eyes are glazed over with hunger. They're starved. Because of that bitch Sabrina, I cannot venture beyond the fortress walls. They choose to remain at my side, thus depriving themselves of the opportunity to hunt. You seem to have a better understanding with wolves than with humans. I raised them from when they were cubs. In a sense, they are my only friends. I've heard that wolves can survive a month without nourishment. From what I know, that's not true of princesses. Geralt? Your wolves' eyes. They're starved. You seem. I raised. All right. I'll see if I can find something for them. I spotted several wyverns in the area, on the peninsula across the river from the camp. If you could slay three of them and bring me their meat, I'll reward you. Reward me? I have a runestone that can be cast into a blade. What did you think I had in mind? Nothing. I'll be back soon. Geralt? A nice night, fuck. That's what I had in mind. <laughs> no, I'll be no, come on, I'm just kidding. Alright. Alrighty then. Diabil and Banshee. Ban Banshee. Nice wolves. Companion wolves. I like it. Alright. I think that's enough for one episode. And I'm going to pick up the next episode exactly from here. So, see you in the next episode. And please, if you like this video, give it a like. And never subscribe to my channel. Never. Ever. Hoodie doodie.